You take a trip to your local Foot Locker looking to cop a new pair of kicks. As you arrive and begin to scan the display wall, you notice the large selection of Yeezy boots in various colorways. And yes, they have your size. They have all sizes. Sounds like an alternate world in the multiverse, right? Well, believe it or not, this is actually a goal of Kanye West and the guys at Adidas to quote, make Yeezy boots available to anyone who wants them. It's really no secret. This was one of the main reasons Kanye originally left Nike years ago. He complained that Nike wanted to hold the reins way too tight, even restricting his authority with his own shoe. Nike wanted to keep the sneakers on a very strict release schedule, which not only caused popularity to explode, but resale prices along with it. Disgusted, West departed his partnership with Nike for Adidas in hopes of being able to do things a bit more his way. Now you might be thinking, we're several generations in with Adidas, why has nothing seemed to have changed? Well last year, Adidas John Wexler went on record with The Breakfast Club and saying it's actually because the Yeezy sneaker is a very much high tech shoe. As Adidas own website says, the shoe is supposed to fit like a second skin. And the outsole integrates Adidas Boost technology which contains highly responsive properties that offer an unparalleled level of comfort, performance, and style. According to Wexler, the Boost material is purchased from NASA. Which is cool as it sounds, one would think a government entity such as NASA would have shit tons of this stuff laying around just waiting to get rid of, right? Especially seeing as though NASA doesn't do much else these days. Or at the very least be able to plug Adidas in with the company that makes it for them. But with the Boost Tech also being used in sneakers such as the Ultra Boost and NMD, which all in all have been made more readily available to the public, one would think that if this actually was a problem, it's been resolved now. Perhaps the most convincing evidence of this resolution can be seen in the recent Yeezy Boost V2 Zebra and Cream White colorway releases. Unlike every other Yeezy design shoe, these did not sell out instantly when released. And that's definitely not because nobody wanted them. I mean, they're still the most popular shoe in the game. But because thousands of pairs were released to many stores in what is being called the easiest Yeezy release ever. It finally looks like West and Adidas are moving closer to their original goal with more and more quantity being released in each colorway and even more factories being made and growing bigger to supply the demand. Now arguably this is a good strategy. Adidas has been nipping at the heels of Nike since signing Kanye and placing the $200 pair of sneakers on a vast portion of the world's population not only accumulates a pretty decent chunk of change but goes a long way in a sneaker war if not even puts Adidas over. After all, one could argue that it was Nike who indirectly created the sneaker resale industry. Unlike the Boost Tech, many of the Jordan sneakers were easily created quickly, and there is no real reason for the shortage other than to drive up the hype, which spawned a new industry in where savvy entrepreneurs snatched up limited quantity kicks at retail, then turned around and jacked up the price on the resale market. Due to limited availability and high demand, buyers are willing to shell out untold amounts on resale which is good in a way because it creates opportunity. But as the original manufacturer, you're leaving millions on the table. This was obviously tolerated by Nike because for all the money that they were losing to resale, they gained from popularity being drummed up from the whole ordeal. But if you're Adidas, however, and you want to take over the number one spot, you've got to think outside the box and you just may have to change the paradigm. Adidas has learned that they can create buzz without manufacturing unnecessary shortage with their pop heavy culture advertisement campaign and futuristic design innovation. Could this trend continue with the release of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Dark Green? If recent history proves accurate, there will be a lot more available stock in stores and with the green colorway not being as versatile as white, could we actually see pairs remaining weeks after release? Well probably not weeks, but you get the picture. The next question is, what does this mean for the resale market? The cream whites now resell for as low as $4.55, which along with the V2 copper and green is amongst the lowest of any Yeezy release. And with more colors and even more quantity being released, this figure is sure to continue to fall. But rest assured, of course this doesn't mean that any and every Yeezy release will be just as available as any mundane release at your local champs. Some colorways are bound to be in higher demand than others, hence selling out faster. And let's not even think about collaborations. All in all, in my opinion, greater availability is a good thing. It's a win-win. Adidas gets more sales and perhaps the top market, market spot. Average consumers finally get a chance to get in on the party. 
and high beasts get their occasional grill drop. How could this be a bad thing? Let me know your opinion. Leave a comment below letting us know if you're for or against more availability of the Yeezy boots. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For Flight 214, this is Nate the Great, signing off.